Warren, what's going on? The great NFL Hall of Famer. Talk to us. Hey, there, honey, how you doing this morning, man? We don't have to talk about pee and all that stuff, do we? I mean, if you wanna if you wanna weigh in on the subject, I mean, how'd you get it done? No, I I, I do it in the bathroom. You know, there's a locker room, and oh, you can wow. do it in there, and you don't have to worry about doing it on yourself. You don't have to do it on the sideline. You don't have to go in the tunnel. We're never feel more than a time, so most guys can hold their stuff for at least an hour. I would think. An hour? I don't know about that, but you know what? You, you come out. You come out for pregame before you even come out with your uniform on for about an hour to warm up, right? Then you go back in, you put on your uniform, you can use the bathroom then. <laughs> come back out for pregame with your team for about 45 minutes. You go back in, you can use the bathroom again then. The first Thank half you, Warren. About an hour, a little over an hour. And then you go back in at halftime, you can use it again. So why, why would you ever have to get on the pipe? I don't know. You know, maybe because most people consume more water than their ex, you know, more water than they have to use the restroom while they're on the field. But let's get to football. You know, the there one, you go. one thing I have to say is I have to thank you. I have to I have to say that I almost went to the University of Washington. I didn't know if you knew that. But in 1978, when you beat Michigan in the Rose Bowl, I know that's on the wall in, in, in Michigan. And I almost went to the University of Washington. And my mom actually utilized that game in order to provide leverage over Lloyd Carr and say, look, if you don't give my son a scholarship, he's going to go to the University of Washington and beat them like they did in the Rose Bowl. So that we're, we're kind of connected <laughs> like that. Yeah, that was a negotiating point for your mom. Very smart woman. It was a huge one. It was a huge one. So, you know, looking, looking at, at, at this season, I mean, you've got to, you know, look at all the different quarterbacks that are out there and the different things that they're doing, you know, I, are you excited about seeing, you know, the guys like Derek Carr out there? Are you excited seeing guys like, you know, Johnny Manziel eventually going to get into the game? And, of course, Russell Wilson. I know you have some comments on him. Yeah, I, I love Russell. We have a great relationship, you know, because I work with the Seattle Seahawks and I've worked with them for the last 10 years. I got a chance to really know Russell when he first got here and really impressed with uh, him overall, his maturity, uh, his work ethic, uh, of course, his skills on the field and, and his leadership abilities, and, and we've seen what he's done in a very short period of time, already a Super Bowl championship uh, in, in just two years in the league. So I love talking to young quarterbacks. I love helping out young quarterbacks because it is a huge transition to go from uh, college football to the National Football League with everything that's asked of you as a quarterback, not just what you're asked to do on the field, but the leadership abilities, the, the way you're asked to play right away and, and play well right away. And then all the other things that go along with the, with the position off the field. So any any advice I can give the young guys to make that transition easier, I try to do. Hall of Famer Warren Moon joining the Dan Patrick Show with us. If you were a coach, what would your policy be on rookie quarterbacks? Well, I think it all depends on the team you have around them. And, and you can take a lot of pressure off young quarterbacks if he has a good team to work with. If your team you don't feel is very good and he's going to have to kind of carry the load, I wouldn't play a young quarterback that early. But when you look at like a Ben Roethlisberger when he went to Pittsburgh, they had a great defense, great running game. So he basically just had to manage the game until he grew into the position. Same thing with Joe Flacco when he went to uh, Baltimore. He had a great defense with Ray Lewis, great leadership on that team. And then, uh, again, a great running game. So he didn't have to have all that on his shoulders. But other guys have gone places where they've had to kind of carry the load and didn't have a great uh, system around them and a great uh, – four players around them and they failed because they were asked to do too much too early. So it just depends on what type of team you have, how early I would play a young guy. Well, Derek Carr is the only one getting the start right off the bat in week one. Which rookie quarterback is most set up to succeed this season? Well, you know, none of these guys are, again, are going to play right away except for Derek Carr. And that just got decided in the last, uh, you know, few days just because of that last performance he had in that last preseason game. And, you know, the jury's still going to be out on him in, in the first few weeks of the season, whether he's ready to play or not. But the Raiders feel like he is. Um, I think Teddy Bridgewater is a guy who's really prepared to play right away. If he, if he was asked to play, I think Blake Bortles has shown during the preseason that he's the guy that can play if he's asked to play sometime early this year. But I think it's good. None of those guys are starting right away. They'll get a chance to see what it's like. Because the preseason and the regular season are two different animals. The intensity goes up. The defenses become more complex. And uh, they'll get a chance to see that from the sidelines and, and just kind of experience it before they're actually asked to step on the field and play. So how long does it really take for a quarterback to 
really diagnose the game and really allow it to slow down. I mean, Russell did it so quickly, but at the same time, you know, people still call him a game manager and not necessarily an elite quarterback. So, you know, is it when you when the game slows down and you can just manage the entire thing that that you actually become that elite quarterback or you know how what do you think about that? You know, again, it depends on, you know, what you're asked to do as a young quarterback and what you have around you. Uh, Russell, a lot of the things they're doing with their offense are things that he did in college. So uh, his learning curve wasn't that big when he came in here because there was a lot of similarity. Some guys come out of college system and they go to something totally different when they go to the NFL. So it takes them a little bit longer to really uh, master the master the system before they feel good about it. And like you said, everything slows down. So, again, it's always different. The quarterback position is such a hard position to judge, such a hard position to scout because there's so many variables that go along with it. Huge blow to the Denver offense with Wes Welker missing the first four games of the season. Uh, back when you were a player, how concerned with you with what you put in your body? Well, nowadays you really have to be concerned with it because you're being tested all the time. You're being tested randomly, and you just never know when that's going to happen. So you you got to really be on top of what uh, what you're putting in your body and the the, the rules for uh, you know for what you or, or the uh, the suspensions or the penalties for what you put in your body are severe. And so that's why you have to be extra careful on what you put in your body, or you're going to be penalized hard. And Russ Welker is going to lose four games for his football team, and those are crucial games to start the season. And he's going to lose, you know, upwards of a million point nine uh, of his career of his uh, salary. So that's a lot of money uh, to take off the table for having one night of maybe partying, or, or or one night of or one day of just putting in the wrong supplement in your body, depending on what it is he put in his body. I'm really not sure what it was. Warren Moon hanging out on the Dan Patrick Show. What are you doing with FantasyFundraising.com? Well, uh, FantasyFundraising.com uh, is a uh, site I got involved with that uh, really helps raise money for charities. And the charity that I'm I'm uh, supporting is is the uh, Children's Miracle that make that the uh, excuse me St. Jude's Hospital. Uh, I work with kind of both of them, but St. Jude's Hospital is the one that's going to benefit from this. And uh, what you do is you get a chance to play fantasy football against myself or different celebrities. And if you win, you, you can uh, really win some really good prizes. And you're also helping out a charity because you're the one that, that donates the money uh, to play against the different celebrities. So it's a great cause. Everybody's involved in fantasy football. And uh, I think it's a, a very competitive thing. And it's, you can have bragging rights and say you beat somebody like myself or, or any other celebrity might, that might be involved playing. I will be going there. It's fantasyfundraising.com. Warren Moon, thanks for joining us today. Hey, thanks for having me on, guys. Appreciate right. it. I appreciate All right, thanks, that Warren. very much.